I am Dr. Sharjil and today I am presenting an interesting case. Look closely this patient and you will observe the gradual drooping of the both upper lids. Right more marked than the left. Now we have asked this patient to close his eyes for more than 30 seconds and we will observe whether the ptosis improves or not the patient is 40 years old and now after opening the eyes you can see the improvement in ptosis and as we have asked him to continue to keep open his eyes again you can see the gradual drooping of eyelids so he presented with complaint that as the day progresses not only the ptosis becomes severe but also diplopia worsens his pupils were round reactive and regular and fundi were normal and with rest at morning or after sleep the ptosis improves according to the patient he is all right in the mornings and in the evenings he feels too much difficulty to open his eyes so we diagnosed him as a case of myasthenia gravis now observe in the left eye kogan twitch sign just look we are asking him from down gaze to look upwards in the primary gaze and when he shift his gaze from down into the primary or up gaze the left upper lid overshoots so this sign is known as kogan twitch sign and it is present in myasthenia gravis just observe again the kogan twitch sign so Kogan twitch sign demonstrates the Herring's law of equal innervation. It is typical of myasthenic ptosis when person changes its gaze from down to primary or up gaze. The lid overshoots. So the other signs of myasthenia are squint, external ophthalmoplegia, double vision and uh, the important one important point is that pupils are never involved because it's a disease of skeletal muscles not smooth muscles myasthenia is an autoimmune disease uh, due to antibodies against acetylcholine receptors in neuromuscular junctions resulting in fatigability and weakness that worsens as the day progresses it is acquired autoimmune disease now in this patient uh, you have seen that the superior gaze is extremely limited there was also limitation of uh, abduction and adduction as well so systemic muscles of facial expression mastication speech writing muscles are also affected the most common extraocular muscles involved are medial rectus and superior oblique. In this patient, you have seen the adduction defect. Other clinical signs that uh, other clinical important diagnostic sign is that uh, uh, you will get bizarre muscle environment. Two muscles of third nerve along with fourth nerve are sixth nerve as well as third nerve few muscles involvement so always think of myasthenia in such cases various diagnostic tests are 
टेंसिलॉन एड्रोफोमिन एड्रोफोनियम टेस्ट रिपीटिटिव नर्व स्टिमुलेशन टेस्ट सिंगल फाइबर इलेक्ट्रोमायोग्राफी स्लीप टेस्ट आई स्पैक टेस्ट कोगन ट्विच साइन सीरम एंटी कोलिन रिसेप्टर एंटीबॉडी टेस्ट सीरम एंटी मसल स्पेसिफिक काइनेज एंटीबॉडी टाइटर ओरल पायरिडोस्टिगमीन इनटेक टेस्ट मसल बायोप्सी डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस इस थायराइड ऑफ थर्मोपैथी थर्ड क्रेनियल नर्व पॉलिसी सी पी ई ओ माइटोनिक डिस्ट्रॉफी लैम्बॉट ईटन सिंड्रोम ट्रीटमेंट इज मेनली मेडिकल पायरिडोस्टिगमीन इट इज़ अ लॉन्ग एक्टिंग कोलिन स्टोरेज इनिबिटर इज यूज टू ट्रीट आकुलर माइस्थीनियम और स्टेराइड्स आर गिवन इम्यूनो मॉडिलेटर्स आर गिवन प्लाज्मा फेरिस कैन बी डन एंड सर्जिकली थाइमेक्टमी कैन ऑल्सो बी डन फॉर माइस्थीनिक कंट्रोल इन द एंड आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक माई डियर फ्रेंड कुलीग एट जी एम सी डॉक्टर फरहान अली and his other colleagues who made this video and then sent it to me so that i can present here so that was all about the myasthenia gravis thank you very much